well, welcome to the Lunar Development Conference of 2023, everybody. And uh, it will run nonstop for six hours. So if you need a break, you need to take a break when it's uh, somewhat less, less interesting, maybe. Uh, and be quick about it so you get back to, the, to see the bits. Um, today and tomorrow we will start um, at, at the same time, effectively. Um, yeah, I think tomorrow 15, is... 15 minutes earlier, sort of, yeah. but that, that sort of ties in with uh, yeah. uh, the welcome. We had to push the welcome forward a little bit to make room for for an extra uh, presentation. So it's a little it's a little earlier tomorrow. Yeah, 15 minutes. Yep. Um, we will be recording this, and um, uh, the recording will be made available, uh, put online. Shouldn't take more than a week or two. We'll see. Um, yeah, we're we're all volunteers here, so we have to edit it and post it and everything. So if it takes a couple of weeks, yeah, just bear with us. Yeah. So the, the event is uh, arranged by uh, the Moon Society, and. Uh, uh, it's uh, me and Ben who is organizing it, and that's Lunar Homestead and Moonbase Lab Trust. Or well, the other way around, Ben is, is Lunar Homestead and I'm Moonbase Lab Trust. Uh, and uh, we will be um, pretty hard at the ending time of uh, presentations in order to get the next presenter uh, the time to start. Uh, Apart from, from the keynote speaker, uh, Dr. Prenario, uh, who will have uh, 45 minutes, everybody else has 30 minutes in total. And that is uh, uh, including questions. So uh, uh, please leave some space for a few questions there. 20 minutes out of 30 is fine. Right. We should and... be able... Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go no, no, keep. I was just going to say, if you have questions, just uh, type it in chat. Don't ask it over your mic, and uh, the presenter will will ask it. Uh, the the host, will, Nicholas, will ask it to the the presenter. Yep. Um, should also uh, have a little bit of a plug up on the International Moon Day. We will have uh, an arrange uh, uh, an event there. Uh, with the question of what will the lunar settlement look like in 50 years if we start now. Essentially, uh, an open discussion with uh, anybody who participates. This is a three-part event starting in Turkish, in Turkey, uh, with uh, Zengiz Tuklu as a host, then continuing uh, at the end of that with uh, me in Sweden, and we will probably speak Swedish unless there are uh, English speakers there. I think most Swedes uh, understand that perfectly fine. So then we'll swap to English. Uh, and then Ben will have um, uh, uh, an event a bit later uh, in the US, which will certainly be in English. It'd be very difficult otherwise. <laughs> Uh, uh, we should probably put the link to that uh, in chat here, maybe I'll uh, find one. Yep, and like Nicholas said, it's just going to be uh, an informal discussion. Um, we'll play like a video in the beginning and, and that'll be about it. About an hour for each for each session. Do you want me to post the link, Nicholas? Yeah, you got no, um, there you go. There, there we go. There is the link to uh, uh, the event. And it has local timestamps to so, uh, convert them to uh, whatever you are. And the, um, the topic for the LDC this year is short-term needs and long-term goals. So basically, what do we need to do now in order to reach these particular long-term goals for lunar settlement? 
Yeah, uh, it isn't. Uh, we had discussed uh, uh, trying to separate the, the two topics, but essentially it is a bit of a mix and, and match. Uh, so we don't actually have uh, one day uh, short term and one day long term, but it's more. Uh, it, it's, it's a lot of the topics are kind of difficult to put into either cat category, but uh, right. I do think we have a quite interesting. Uh, set of speakers here anyway and I, I think we fill both both of the goals uh, quite well yeah i think so so i'm um, very much looking forward to uh, an interesting couple of days here to, with um, uh, and learn we will learn a lot i'm sure yeah i think we have a lot of a lot of good speakers and stuff that most people probably haven't heard before which i like to to listen to at a conference you get to hear some 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 different opinions and some different tech that you maybe not have thought of so should be good let's see was there anything else we needed to cover we're still waiting for people to show up Any more technical instructions? It is pretty simple. Uh, the one talking will uh, open the mic and then the the uh, and the video, and everybody else will uh, uh, be muted and without the picture. So that that should save the bandwidth, and and uh, we can focus on on the speaker. Yep. Yep. And I have control, and so do you if you need to go in and kill somebody's mic or somebody's video uh, we were discussing whether to start early uh, if the welcome was too short which is obviously is um yeah but we're still getting people but coming in but so i think let's i think i think we should actually follow the the time schedule so we start each presentation on time uh, so yeah. that people that uh, might be focused will uh, get in and have a be able to see the that topic right so we stick, we stick to the schedule yeah i think you're right okay so one more minutes for my speech now yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. gonna keep you waiting yeah. a little longer <laughs> I, Swedish, I'm, 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 I'm the host. I should sing and dance <laughs> something here now. But... Yeah. <laughs> I had some experiences with Sweden in the form of time with time precision. I That's have a right. friend there and uh, she was invited in Romania and uh, we started a conference 15 minutes later and we said it's the academic 15 minutes. So we <laughs> name it. So we delay 15 minutes just for everybody to come. And when I uh, went to Sweden, they had also a meeting at nine o'clock and uh, she told me, Doreen, you, you should be uh, two minutes before nine because on nine sharp, we really start. We don't have that 15 academic time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Actually, I have had the opposite experience from industry. We we were talking about the industrial half hour because they never stopped in on time. <laughs> okay. Excellent. But that was in Sweden still. Uh, you. Nice and sunny here, and uh, it is not too warm here. We were discussing that a bit earlier. The temperatures in other places. Uh, well, you're, uh, you're 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 pretty far north, so I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. So uh, it, it's it's sub zero uh, half the year, and uh, I uh, was actually surprised to realize that it's still too warm but it's only a week or two in the, in the middle of the summer uh, now now it's back to being comfortable cool all right well i guess we have a few minutes does anybody have any questions if you do just go ahead and unmute and ask
Mm -hmm. okay. For, 14 people here, it's not uh not a host but it is uh still still a, a good it's a it's a start for a discussion yeah well you know how it is people will roll in eventually hopefully crossing my fingers for that yeah. well you know you know it's since it's a members only event this is a little less than 10 percent of the membership so i guess that's not too bad if you look at it that way Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, today we have um, the start with the Dimitri uh, uh, on recommended framework and key elements, and then we'll continue with. Uh, uh, Lunar Frontier Enabling Tech, and I will talk about uh, what I have been doing here up north uh, in the first steps of a Lunar Analog. And then we'll have a conceptual layout of supervisory system uh, from Moon Mine Production, followed by uh, Lunar Regolith and Simulants. Then we will have uh, uh, some uh, Moon Society information talking about uh, what we have done and what we intend to do in the Moon Society. Mm -hmm. uh, continuing with astrometallurgy and its relevance for future lunar settlements. And of course, we need metals to um, uh, build stuff. Uh, an overview of lunar habitat concepts and environment. And then uh, 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 the talk about the cislunar architecture, which is uh, the only talk actually that isn't actually on the moon surface or about what's happening on the moon surface. And then um, uh, at uh, 10 o'clock Central European time, let's see. That's uh, 1 p.m. Pacific. Yes, 1 p.m. Pacific, yeah, and uh, uh, the rest, the rest of you need need to look up what it means in there. Uh, they will have a panel discussion uh, about what is the most important technology for lunar settlement, and uh, I expect that will be more than one taker for that. I, I have at least three suggestions uh, for what is most important, and uh, there are of course a lot of things that will be absolutely critical there. So that. I hope that will be a, an interesting discussion. Oh, it should be. I'm sure everybody's got their own take on what the most important piece of tech is going to be. Yeah. Um, there's also a panel discussion tomorrow, which is uh, what is the most important criterion for lunar settlement location. Hi, Victor. And okay, we are... Uh...